What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and in this video I'm gonna show you all the keyboards I went through in order to find the perfect keyboard for a programmer or for someone that types a lot at the computer. And let me tell you that it wasn't that easy, it was pretty hard. The first thing to consider is that before switching to Linux and building my own custom computer, I actually used an iMac for three, four years and then a MacBook Pro. So I was kind of spoiled by the Mac type of keyboard, by the Apple keyboards, and I never questioned the type of keyboard that the, my computer came with. So I've been using most of the times these, the Apple Magic Keyboard number two, and I'd say I loved it. It was everything that I was looking for. It was very quiet, very light, great battery life, uh, nice ergonomic. I know it's someone will consider it a little bit too flat, but it was perfect for me. It's not the perfect keyboard out there, but it was comfortable enough. And I like the uh, flat design, the very minimalistic approach to this keyboard, the low travel keys, uh, the fact that it's super light and quiet and literally never failed me a single day. After switching to Linux, I decided to explore a little bit better the availability of the plethora of keyboards out there, all the different configuration. And uh, that's when the problem started. I decided to go completely the opposite way. Instead of a super flat, tiny, low travel, chiclet style keyboard, I decided to see what was all the rage about mechanical keyboards. So I went with the WASD mechanical keyboard. This is the WASD model V2. And let me tell you, this thing is a beast. It's very thick, heavy, hefty. It's, it's just so big. And I did actually a full review on this keyboard. And let me tell you that I try to love it. I try to love it so much. I push myself and uh, you can see the old video if you want to check it out. I'm very optimistic in that review, but after two months, I, I cannot get used to this. This is not, this is not the keyboard for me. It's too heavy, it's too big, it's too clunky, it looks like something from 1992. And even if it's very sturdy, very durable, uh, I really don't like the Cherry MX feeling. These clickety clack type of things is just the worst. All these noise was coming in during my online meetings, during my video recordings, and even using like noise canceling headphones wasn't helping a lot. And there's also the fact that I'm not the only one in this room. Also my wife works here. Her computer is on the opposite side of this wall and she hates this noise because she can hear it all the time. And I type very, very fast and sometimes it was like a machine gun in the background. So this wasn't the best solution. After trying this, basically I went uh, on the two opposite side of the spectrum. I went with the Apple Magic Keyboard, super light and thin, and the Waz Keyboard, super thick and heavy. So I decided to write a list in order to find all the things that I want and that I don't want in my next keyboard. The first thing, I want it to be low profile. I don't want it to be super flat, i.e. the Apple Magic Keyboard, but I don't want to be even like super thick like the Waz. Something in between a low profile keyboard Keyboard, it's fine. I'm not against mechanical keyboards, but has to be quiet. I don't care if an, it's a Cherry MX switch or whatever type of switch. I don't know anything about those things. Has to be quiet. It doesn't matter the travel distance as far as I get comfortable with it. Another thing I would like to have, it's a wireless keyboard that has a good connectivity, something that only the Magic Keyboard from Apple has. It never fails me. All the other keyboards that are tried with Bluetooth always had hiccups left and right. And another thing is that if it's battery based, the battery life has to be great. I don't want to change the battery once a week. If it's rechargeable battery, even better. But if I don't have to touch the battery at all, it would be great. So I started exploring all my options. The first keyboard that I found and I decided to try was this one, the Havit HVKB390L. And it's a gaming keyboard. It's very low profile, as you can see, it has these uh, sort of, I don't know the technical name of these switches, but uh, they're like blue switches, very low profile. And I really like this keyboard as a first impression. It was very smooth, very, very well built, um, not too heavy, but heavy enough to not move around on my desk while typing. And the only problem with this is those blue switches were atrociously loud. 
So I decided to do one thing that I don't recommend anyone to do. I decided to remove the keycap, remove the switch, open it up and remove the little spring that causes the noise, the clickety, clickety clack noise that uh, the key does when it goes up and down. And see, this is the result. So now the noise of the key is only when the actual keycap hits the board underneath. And since it's the plastic on plastic, it's not plastic on metal, uh, the sound was dampened and it was okay. This is a wire keyboard, which it was okay. I don't really like wire keyboards, but it removed all the problems about connectivity and batteries. And it was fine for uh, pretty much for three, four months. Then some keys started failing uh, and also, Typing really fast on this is not really quiet because if I start typing with a little bit of more push and more strength, the sound comes out and it's not super quiet. So also these, especially the space bar, not the best as you can hear. So uh, that was, I would say, uh, partially a success and partially a failure, but I thought I was on the right track. So I decided, okay, let's go a step further, let's go thinner and let's go with Logitech because Logitech is one probably it's one of the manufacturers with the best keyboards out there. So I went with the Logitech K780. This thing it's interesting. <laughs> I thought I was gonna like it a lot and then I ended up hating it so much. Uh, first of all the design is very interesting. I love the fact that you have this little rail here, this little space where you can put uh, your uh, cell phone, a tablet. This has all Bluetooth connectivity and you can connect to three different devices at once. Um, it was very comfortable at the beginning and I like the little inclination. It's pretty flat. It's sturdy but not finicky. Uh, it's not super heavy but slightly heavier than the Habit. Uh, the problem, the major problems were two. First, the keypad number, the number pad. I don't use it, I don't like to use it, uh, and it just occupies space. I like my desk really tight and small, and the fact that I had this keypad here, I was constantly hitting on the side with my mouse, and I just hated it so much. And the other thing is the arrow keys. The arrow keys of this keyboard might be the worst arrow keys ever made. I don't know who decided to make them this way. They're round, they have the opposite bump compared to the actual keycaps. The keycaps are concave. This one they extrude outside, they're very small, I constantly miss that. And as a developer, I navigate the code through uh, control and, and the arrow keys. I just jump up and down the page and I navigate the different lines. And I always miss these arrow keys. I used this keyboard for three months and I never got used to this. So it was terrible. And also the connectivity of this, it wasn't great. Uh, I don't know if my Bluetooth receiver is failing, but I use the MX Mouse Master 3. It's also connected via Bluetooth not a single issue. Sometimes with disconnecting, all of a sudden I had to uh, switch between channels and then go back to the original channel to reconnect. So yeah, it gave me a bunch of problems. I like the fact that I had some built-in media uh, key shortcuts and the function keys because it's handy. But yeah, n this one not recommended. And the shape of these keys, man, it looks good on picture, but it's terrible to type in. This is... This was a mistake. So at this point I was really bummed because I tried three, four different keyboards and I couldn't find that familiar feeling that I had with the Apple Magic Keyboard. Even if, as I said, it's not a perfect keyboard, I I was able to just use it and work it and get, get used to the travel distance, get used to the uh, setup and configuration, the layout of the keyboard in just a couple of days of typing. All the other keyboards that I tried, I was struggling for weeks and weeks to get used to it. So I decided to find, okay, let's say, Maybe there are some Apple keyboards clone out there that they emulate the layout and the style and the slickness, but they're compatible with other products. They are wired or even wireless, but they're not just for Mac. And that's where I found the Matthias brand or Matthias. This is the Matthias aluminum keyboard. And as you can see, it totally looks like an Apple product. <laughs> it's space gray color with black keycaps and it's gorgeous. I loved it. Uh, you, uh, 
kind of figure out that it's not a proper Apple keyboard because in the back there's these like plasticky reflective surface and of course there's the Matthias logo here but this is great this is super light and thin has a better angle than the Apple Magic Keyboard and the typing experience see how quiet here how quiet it is these keycaps, this is, if I'm not wrong, these are just a regular key switches, like um, uh, butterfly switches. They're so quiet, so smooth, and I loved it. It was perfect. Um, I wish they didn't, I wish it didn't come with these other side. I wish the arrow keys were integrated here, like the Apple keyboard, but this is actually better. I got used to these keys pretty quickly and was able, I never missed a keystroke on the arrow keys because these are very easy to find and they're regular size, they're not rounded or weird as the um, media keys on top. It works perfectly out of the box with Linux. It connects via Bluetooth, never had a problem with the connectivity, uh, but you can also attach it with the cable, with a standard USB, mini USB cable. And the battery life is expected to last two years. It's rechargeable battery. Uh, it came in, I recharged it the whole night, and then I started using it for three months, and that's it, never failed. The problem is that at this point, I was very satisfied, but the feeling of a mechanical keyboard started slightly getting into me. I was like, okay, I really hate the WASP keyboard, but the habit that it was half mechanical, like low profile mechanical, wasn't so bad. I was kind of feeling uh, the bounce on my fingers and it was like easier to type long hours than on this. This is very low profile. So when I type a lot on this, my fingers start to hurt, like the nerves on my knuckles start to hurt because I type quite heavily and I needed something to have a better bound. So I kept using this, but on the side I started experimenting with other keyboards and I'm not gonna go through all of that, but I'm gonna just show you the perfect mechanical keyboard that I'm currently using today and I'm so happy because it's just the perfect one. This is the Varmilo VA87M and it's so good. This company, it's, this is not a sponsored video, but I'm gonna just say beautiful things about this keyboard because I love it so much. This company puts so much craftsmanship on this keyboard, I was so impressed. First of all, by looking at the picture, I thought this is gonna be just like another WASD keyboard, like massively thick, heavy, and unbearable to use, but this is a full-on mechanical keyboard, but the keycaps are slightly thinner than usual. They're not low profile per se, but they're not a full-on height of a regular keycaps. And the switches are universal. You can mount your own uh, switches if you want to customize it. The color configuration is just so cute, so nerdy. I loved it so much. But the other thing is that this is very thin for a full-on mechanical keyboard. The inclination was perfect. I never feel strained on my wrist after typing so much. I don't need a wrist uh, a rest for my hands because it's not as tall as the WAS keyboard. And also, they made it in... I don't know what they use. They use some specific silent switches. Probably these are Cherry MX red silent switches, if I'm not wrong and they loop them so much that this is so quiet. The sound of this is so satisfying, it's so soothing. I don't hate it, I love it so much, and I can hear this sound for a long, long time. And the size of this keyboard is perfect. Uh, I wish it had like a, a smaller size. I think they sell a smaller size, but I really love this configuration. The arrow keys are perfect. I never miss the arrow keys. They're very easy to find. The function keys here, they have uh, media controls integrated. You can switch to the function via the function button and it's just perfect. You can change configuration, you can switch the buttons, has built-in configuration for backlighting, if enough, I don't care about that, but this, this is the perfect keyboard. I have been using this for two months, I'm so satisfied, and whenever I feel like this is 
too thick for me like I feel uh, this travel is too much maybe when I'm recording a tutorial I need something quieter way more low profile to not interfere with the microphone I switch to the Matthias so I know this is not the perfect answer for everyone because everyone is different you have different uh, necessities different tastes but these two combined are the perfect keyboard for developers, in my opinion. The Vermilo, perfect mechanical keyboard. The Matthias, aluminum keyboard, is the perfect low profile if you really want something that it's almost identical to an Apple keyboard. So there you have it. Uh, this was a, just a generic overview of all the keyboards I went through throughout this year in order to try and find a proper one. But you guys let me know in the comment below if you want a more dedicated specific review on a single keyboard or a comparison between the two if you're interested in any of the keyboards that I showed. Uh, but what about you? What kind of keyboard do you use? Do you like a heavy, hefty mechanical keyboard? You don't have the problem of sharing your studio with another person so you can go Cherry MX Blue super loud and you love the clickety clickety clack. Clickety -clack, clickety -clack, clickety -clack. That's very annoying for me, but if you love that, kudos to you. But yeah, let me know in the comments below and it's good to be back. So thank you all for watching and I talk to you in the next one. Oh, leave a like and subscribe as usual. Bye.